trying to ramp up to get tested, bypassing a lot of protocols to be able to make it available. Well, so as we wind down now, then, let me ask uh, Dr. Driss. Uh, we saw on television right here in Nigeria, I think it must have been at least about five or six uh, young men and women who are medical doctors who worked for First Consultant, mm -hmm. and all of these people were said to have been infected, and they lived, and they're still leaving without ZMAP. So how did we do it? First of all, like, like you said, no treatment, no vaccine. And uh, the treatment has been supportive. It says that you support depending on how they present to you. If they present with diarrhea, you replace fluids. You give them support with something that boosts immunity and that kind of thing. And I think age, again, is a factor. Most of them are sort of a relatively younger age. Mm -hmm. but, and that's the beauty of the younger age group. So it's not as if we did anything out of the other. But a few of them had represented some brain affectation, I mean, died. I think one still has some sequel of that. But there was no specific treatment, but I say just supportive treatment. And this is what brings me back to the issue of research. And um, some, some, some interesting things happened. Like I said, the body of knowledge for Ebola is still growing. because, And um, even from all the contacts we had, there were some people that had direct contact that everybody felt would be positive or not positive. There are some people that either very contact they were positive. So one of the things we are doing is that this research thing, we should benefit, we should build the capability, local capability for that. We should not leave everything to the exchange, and that's what Lagos State 2 is championing. We developed a core group of a core group in Lagos State. We want to partner with a group from the US who actually signifies interest because of the number of people that survived here. And we're looking at a lot of parameters. Part of the thing I'm going to look at looking at is that look, what is it that we have in their bodies that confers uh, vulnerability to one group and <laughs> opposite to another group. We need to look at that. Are there factors in the blood? Are there other things? At the same time, too, just like you said, they do the clinical trials. They've tried use of convalescent serum. People who have survived have serum that can be used to treat new people. But again, they have to be processed. They have to go through clinical trials. They are looking into that. Like it did say, WHO, they, at least they've reduced the the um, protocol, I mean, the temper the protocol that just to fast track with it. But again, we are looking at that too because, again, going that will also build local capacity here to be able to do that rather than rely solely on everything what that comes from outside. outside. Mm -hmm. So I said that go, go beyond that because apart from the serum, you can go beyond that fractionate this serum into other major parts of the blood, blood, blood factor that can be used for many other things, can use to prevent, can use to treat. So. These are the things, the sciences that we need to develop here. And luckily, we have some support now that we could start, you know, but it's a gradual thing. But all those research work needs to be done because there might be some peculiarity that in our own area here that is even we've not known in the body of knowledge of Ebola. So those are the things we're looking into. Too. Okay, we're going to go in just about a minute or so. Let me ask you then, um, the lessons learned, I am sure it's been documented. Dr. Idris just talked about collaboration with other international agencies and other parts of the world in terms of research. But for you, as somebody who is into public health, what is it we need to do to avoid a situation where we feel, oh, we've done so well on this occasion, Nigerians, we can handle anything, and then allow another catastrophe that will hit us bullseye and really knock us out? I think we, we, we need to ramp up our preparedness. I think that's, that's, that's the bottom line. That's, that's what this has taught us. We were slightly lucky in which we have a case that came in in a very peculiar way. So we need to make sure that all the structures that need to be in place should be in place, and we must have a coordinated mechanism to be able to make the structures work. Okay, your final word then. Can you help us focus it on um, the level of preparedness that you alluded to as part of uh, this way of uh, having the level of success that we've got with Ebola. How do we make sure that we replicate it across the country so that if it happens that the person comes in through Chad 
and is going into Borno State or Adamawa or Yobe or somewhere like that, they have the same quality of preparation that Lagos State had. I think the, the basic way is to share knowledge, which we started even during the crisis. If you recollect again, we had the National Council on Health meeting where all the commissioners for health and the federation, I think we had, we had three. The first one to share knowledge and experience what happened in Lagos and what happened in Port Harcourt. And everybody was mandated to start setting up structures. And the process, at least, we were telling them what we were doing in Lagos. And quite a number of people have come to Lagos to say, okay, what were we doing? And some have asked us, how can we assist? So it's a way of sharing knowledge and sharing expertise and telling them what to do. And but have we shared across the country? Well, we shared, yes. we are still sharing. It's, good. it's supposed to be continuously. Because there are some, some like you say, some states where they will have the wherewithal to set up some of those. These things are expensive. And, um, and again, this collaborative effort is there. You have NEMA, National Emergency Management Authority. I mean, I think they now have started developing some programs, cascading some programs nationally to states, I mean, just to develop this capability, which is, which is the positive side of, side, of, side, of, side of the whole matter, too. Because, um, this is a wake-up call for us. It's a test of our healthcare system. Okay. I think we'll leave it on that <laughs> yes. positive note for today. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. I uh, want to thank you, Dr. Jude Idris, the Lagos State Commissioner for Health. Thanks for coming on the show. Okay. And, of course, the Permanent Secretary and Incident Manager for this uh, Permanent Secretary of Ministry of Health in Lagos State and also Incident Manager for the Ebola attack that we've had in Nigeria recently, especially in Lagos State, Dr. Kadi Ogutime, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having us. So we'll take a short break. Our conversation continues in just a moment. Please don't go away. Uh -huh. Uh -huh.